Good morning, this is Stephen Bruce Wong with a COVID-19 update uh, for my fellow investors uh, as well as our investors as well. Um, and it's, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the evictions process, what we should do if we're having difficulty with the tenants, what we should do uh, proactively during this time. So starting with a little bit of news. Um, Jason Kenney said uh, landlords need to be able to continue to protect the value of their property from bad tenants, which is great. Uh, at the same time, we call upon landlords to do the right thing where, and wherever possible extend rent relief during this difficult time to their tenants. He also added it makes no economic sense for them to evict tenants for missing April rent given the effective shutdown of our economy because who else is going to fill those units? Now, some interesting comments there. Uh, I do definitely agree that we uh, as landlords need to be able to protect our property from bad tenants and uh, as ethical people I also think that we shouldn't be throwing people out on the street that don't have any other options uh, just because. I mean that's just you know silly. Um, I don't necessarily agree with his last comment there with respect to uh, you know who else is going to fill those, those units. There's gonna be people and even with uh, some ads up right now we're getting calls for units that uh, will not even be available for a few months. So uh, I still think that, that there's definitely gonna be people out there uh, wanting to rent uh, for various different circumstances that uh, existed before uh, the COVID-19 lockdown or self-isolation or whatever you wanna call it. Um, <clears throat> Now, with regards to the tenants that are on the market right now, they, you know, they may not necessarily be the best tenant. So I think uh, proactively, it's a really good idea to uh, increase your screening. You know, always call the uh, previous landlords, figure out what the story is. You know, we always require at least, uh, you know, I don't want to talk to the the previous landlord. I'd really like to talk to the the previous previous landlord because. You know they really have no skin in the game they 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 shouldn't really care what happens to this person you know the the previous landlord might want to get rid of them and so they'll lie and tell you something uh you know just to get them out of their hair basically so notley um according to edmontoncitynews.ca said the ban would not uh she said that she would like to ban um uh, tenant evictions but the ban would not give a free pass to bad tenants and is more around protecting Alberta Albertans who are in a tenuous situation employment wise or are in self-isolation and cannot leave their home in the first place yeah I mean I agree with that uh, with the self-isolation bit um, but I think that it's really short on details and I, I do like Notley but unfortunately you know this is one area where I'd have to disagree because um, you know, it, it's just really short on details. Okay, so you're not going to evict people. Uh, so then what do you do? How do you encourage them to make sure that they, they do pay rent and then not just, you know, um, deciding to spend that money elsewhere? Because, you know, you're, you know, for us, if we have mortgages, our house is really our priority. We have obligations to the bank and I think they, they should too. Uh, and despite, you know, the, the, the line of thinking that, oh, yeah, we could just apply for mortgage deferrals. Well, we have to make sure that, um, you know, that's not going to affect our credit and our, our ability to purchase and invest in future properties uh, or, or just our personal credit in general. Uh, and also, <clears throat> uh, you know, if we have to apply with the, to the bank for that kind of stuff, then, you know, tenants should also have to apply uh, and, and be approved on a case by case basis for whether or not they're going to be approved for rent relief. So anyway, that's just my two cents on it, but let's get talking about, you know, what we should actually do. So I was just on a call uh, the other night with, uh, to put together by Dave Dubow. Um, it was a COVID-19, you know, uh, real estate investor panel, basically. A lot of people I respect are on there, including Ken Beaton, uh, who's got, you know, I don't know if he still has them, but over 200 uh, rental units in Ontario. So these guys know what they're talking about. Um, again, you know, disclaimer, always get your own advice from professionals. I'm not uh, a lawyer or anything like that. So this is just my opinion or me synthesizing the opinions of others. 
but uh, Ken Beaton and many others on the call said, get letters out to your tenants now and let them know that rent is not being deferred or forgiven. Uh, encourage them to apply now for things like employment insurance, EI. Federal employment insurance is available to those uh, without access to paid sick leave. Uh, apply to the new federal emergency care benefit, which is $900 bi-weekly through the Canada Revenue Agency for up to 15 weeks. Uh, I'll include the link below to that. You can include it to, in your uh, letters to the tenants. Uh, that's https colon slash slash www.canada.ca slash en slash revenue dash agency dash campaigns or sorry slash campaigns slash covid dash 19 dash update dot html has all, everything you need to know in there uh, you can also encourage your tenants to apply for alberta works or alberta supports there's plenty of income support there you can go to www alberta.ca slash alberta-supports.aspx. If your tenant is female or a single mother, uh, consider Discovery House as it provides care to women and children fleeing domestic violence. Uh, I'm sure they will also be willing to provide some rent relief as well. So get them to, to get in touch with Discovery House. They're great people and uh, they've also provided us with plenty of tenants as well. Uh, Alberta's financial relief benefit ends April 1st, so apply now or get your tenants to apply now, https colon slash slash eservices.alberta.ca. Make sure when you get in touch with your tenants, call them, text them, uh, do everything you can to get in touch with them. Make sure they know that rent is not being deferred, but leave the conversation open to discuss uh, their specific circumstances um, and then try to get uh, some you know, as, as much payment as you can upfront for what they owe if they can't pay the whole thing, discuss different payment methods, credit cards and other forms of payment as well. Uh, and of course, as a last resort, you can always offer a payment plan for missed rent. I don't think, and the experts on the panel don't think that this is the time to be evicting tenants. It should be the time to accommodate and, and try to keep your occupancy uh, as high as possible in your buildings. Of course, discuss with your lenders the amortized cost and interest of deferring related to uh, or associated with deferring payments. Um, from what I've heard, you know, deferring payments is not the same thing as defaulting on payments, so it's not going to affect your credit that way. But make sure you get it from the horse's mouth. Make sure you call the lender, not your mortgage broker, but the actual lender for your mortgage and find out these things on a case by case basis. Will it affect your credit? Because, of course, that's uh, as Ken puts it, the golden goose, uh, and you don't want that to be affected because uh, it affects your ability to buy, you know, your future houses for yourself, personal use or investments and so on. So figure out those details and then make a strategic, strategic decision of what you want to do with that. Now, as far as evictions go, if you absolutely need to do an eviction uh, or you just need that insurance, um, RTDRS, the Residential Tenancy Dispute Resolution Service, is still accepting applications through the online e-filing service. And by the way, this information is good for Alberta, so I don't know what's going on in BC or Ontario. This is just for Alberta because that's where I am and that's where I've done my research and I'm just sharing with you what I've found out. So the offices are obviously closed for, you know, uh, COVID contact reasons and so on, but you can reach RTDRS at uh, 1-780-644-3000. On occasion, I find that the phone number won't work because there is, uh, on the first try, because there is a, some kind of queue and if they have too many callers, it just bounces your call. But just keep nailing that number and it eventually it'll go through. Uh, they're not the greatest about answering the phone either, uh, but uh, yeah, just keep trying. Um, should be easy to find the online e-filing service. Just Google RTDRS uh, e-filing, you'll find it. Now I've called several bailiff services in Calgary. They're still trying to perform their work, uh, but what they're saying is, yes, they are doing evictions, but they are uh, <clears throat> on a case-by-case -case basis. So the bailiffs are wanting to, some bailiffs are outright refusing to go to sites to visit houses uh, or just to visit spaces that are where people are sick period so you may have issues evicting folks that are um, visibly sick uh, or, or ill of some sort uh, also the bailiffs are being somewhat discretionary so they're applying their own ethical code and they're wanting to know 
what the circumstances are leading up to the eviction, you know, whether this person is just saying, you know, I'm refusing to pay rent because of this and, you know, they actually have the money. Uh, or if they're just a terrible tenant and they're destroying the property and, and so on, or you have some real serious concerns. So I think ultimately this just goes back to, you know, what everybody's saying, you know, exercise good judgment, uh, you know, try not to put people out on the streets. Obviously, you know, keep your places full. That's what everybody wants. Uh, but again, uh, you know, come up with a good story, <laughs> not a good story, but you, you need to have good reasons if you want to get this pushed through at this time. Uh, especially with the bailiffs because they're they're exercising discretion now if you really have a tenant that uh, is having you're having a lot of troubles with my recommendation is if you're not sure about something uh, if you just have a bad gut feel about this person file the paperwork anyway so writing a 14 day eviction notice yourself is not legally binding make sure that you uh, go to RTDRS the e-filing service and file the note uh, file for a hearing that's the right way to do it. It's legally binding and it leaves you with recourse um, in order to evict if you need to. But of course, there's many other options such as um, payment plans and so on. Uh, so back when it used to take two hours to fill out the paperwork, you had to head down to RTDRS. But now, um, you know, it should only take 15 minutes online if you know what you're doing. And uh, I just like to think about it as a $75 insurance policy to make sure that you can uh, remove the tenant or get your rent uh, on time one way or the other and uh, you, it leaves you with recourse and at least options. So thanks for tuning in. That's all I have for today. If you have any questions about RTDRS uh, evictions, of course, I'm not a legal professional, but I can tell you what my experience, I can share what my experience has been um, with that. So again, thanks for watching and I wish you well in this time. Uh, good luck with your properties and uh, uh, I'll, I'll see you next time. Thanks.